A while ago, I showed my friend, let's call them Charlotte, a trailer for Snake Pass, saying, Look at this cool game with a cute snake. To which she replied, ugh, 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 No, can't watch that, no, ooh. And explained to me that she was scared of snakes and that there was no such thing as a cute snake. At first, I found this odd. My mum is scared of dogs, but she used to watch Blue's Clues with me just fine. Was she just masking her terror? I got away from this thought when I realised I could test my friendship with Charlotte and their support of me and my channel by making an entire video on Snake Pass, a sort of digital trust fall exercise. You play as Noodle, a snake. This brings with it the benefits and downsides of being a lizard who forgot to grow legs. For one, holding forwards gets you almost nowhere, you have to consciously sliver from side to side. The upside is that you are long and bendy, able to wrap around objects and climb with, well, not ease, but it's possible. There's a button to raise your head, a button to go, use the stick to direct yourself, and there's also the old platformer staple, the get a hummingbird to pick up part of your body button. This often means saving you from the brink of certain death, filling you with a sense of relief as if the crocodile you thought had got into your kitchen turned out to be a tiny lizard stuck to your glasses. Oh, there's also a grip button. I mention it late because by the time the game told me I had already slipped and fell many times on the same bamboo outcrop. It's perhaps something that should have annoyed me, but the sense of, oh, that's what you do, that came with the late notice made me feel almost as if I'd achieved something by playing with a handicap until then, even if I was failing. It's a bit like if your little cousin kept beating you in 1v1s on Rust, but you could have won if you'd wanted because I WASN'T EVEN TRYING PROPERLY, BILLY! I WASN'T EVEN TRYING PROPERLY! <coughs> Once you got the hang of the controls though, you can often bypass obstacles by brute forcing them, but far from feeling like cheating, it often feels better than taking your time. It feels like you've elegantly conquered a tough object, even if what you've actually done is flailed a snake onto a stone floor like a piece of spaghetti flung from a plane. Every level has three glowy gem things, five secret medallions, and like a shit ton of blue blobs to collect. Only the glowy rocks are actually necessary to beat each stage, with the blobs acting as both mild distractions and tools to show you paths, and the medallions acting like beautiful sirens, tempting you to teeter and fall before you can make a checkpoint. Or, I suppose to give it a more apt simile, like that woman in The Last Crusade, who falls because she can't give up on the idea of getting the treasure she craves, the Holy Grail. Though I suppose if I thought that was a better example, I should have just used that and not tagged it on the end behind an already serviceable one. Realistically, doing that and then going on to explain that's what I've done is at best a half-hearted attempt at self-awareness and, at worst, a slap in the face to anyone who understands that Elsa Schneider, the woman in The Last Crusade, actually fell to her death attempting to grasp eternal life, a pursuit rather more noteworthy, purposeful, and morally ambiguous than in Snake Pass, where a cartoon snake dies because you like collecting shiny things. So maybe both examples, the, the Sirens and Elsa Schneider, were complete, total wastes of time. Sometimes you even get to cosplay as an eel in levels that have water! Unlike most games where water sections make the controls go weird and awkward, Snake Pass's controls feel exactly the same on land. Weird and awkward. Because every level has an abundance of collectibles, they act as sort of a user-controlled difficulty slider. You can collect everything in an area and move on, or you can collect a few things, or even just one, and make it back to a checkpoint to save your progress. It's the video game equivalent of deciding how many trips to make when taking your food shopping in from the car, or stocking up on condoms even though you keep failing to make use of the one you've had for ages. In game the snake falls, but in real life, you never have a chance to get the snake up. Sometimes you can be hanging on but know it's futile, you're slipping, and the thing you so crave is staring at you to edge closer to your inevitable fall. A bit like Elsa Schneider from The Last Crusade. Except her clinging wasn't futile, she could have been saved if she just gave up on the grail. And for anyone craving a more typical, violent video game, there's these crabs which show up from time to time. When you approach, they're terrified and pop into their shell, but that's the decision that will cost them their lives. Coil up around them and crush them to death. Even better, the loading screen informs us that Noodle is a vegetarian, so he's just murdering for fun. It's purer that way. Eventually, you'll collect what you need from a level and make your way to the end portal. It opens in the ground, and every single time I was hoping to fall down through it only to be let down by this floaty disintegration. Interestingly, when you fall and die on spikes, it has the same animation. Depending on your worldview, you can take that to mean he is always teleported away from death when hitting spikes, or that the canon ending of every level is Noodle's life fading away into nothing. My glass is not only half empty, it's got a leak, I've been letting my nan use it as a bedpan, and it's on my nice new rug, so Noodle is one very dead snake. And besides, the spikes, and the other deaths for that matter, are a missed opportunity to go one of two characterful ways. 
Crash Bandicoot way with cartoonish humorous deaths to take some of the edge off failure, or the weird out of left field ultra violent way. Think of the snake skewered on the spikes, his face twitching as his body slowly shuts down. I know that reptiles on spikes cells, it was in Planet Earth 2 and people loved that. The spines that cover almost every plant in this desert can provide protection and shelter for many animals. So why should these spikes be hung with corpses? What kind of creature could be responsible for creating such a gruesome scene? Our producer, Kevin. We're not sure exactly why he does it. But what we do know is that we can't get him to stop. Please, stop, Kevin. Please, Kevin, stop it. Okay, I'll admit, I've been sitting on that David Attenborough joke for a while, and I've been searching for a way to include it. That's honestly the best opportunity I've had. I've seen a few people complaining about a lack of variety in the game. I don't think that's entirely fair. In terms of challenges you face, you start off with simple climbing frames before switches are introduced, constantly moving parts are introduced, spikes and fire are introduced, meaning you can't always dangle too low, climbing frames get more complex, and the game keeps ramping up the difficulty as you go on. Sometimes the challenge isn't to climb up or across, but to go down, eventually having to carefully anchor yourself as you stretch for the treasure. Now, of course, most of the game does still boil down to climbing things, but you wouldn't complain a regular platformer had too much jumping, so it seems a bit silly to complain there's too much climbing here. Sometimes things are fine, they're just not for you. If you're worried there's too much nakedness at the nudist colony, then accepting that's not the right community for you will be more effective than giving away socks in sets of free at Christmas. Where I do think there's a lack of variety is in the visuals. The four worlds look startlingly similar, so much so that it's hard to tell them apart at times, especially when I'm just showing clips from the same level. But look, here are actual clips from different worlds, and it's still pretty darn close. Even if they didn't differentiate the worlds more, it's a shame that most climbables are bamboo, because they didn't need to be. Levels are small, and any spindly things are always going to be obvious climbing spots, so they could have spiced it up, at least visually. They could have been elephant ribs, or scorched trees, or your paralysed snake brethren. There are options. The other negative aspect is definitely the story, though calling it a story seems like hugely over-exaggerating. A bit like calling a Dignitas worker a cold-blooded killer. Essentially, after each of the four realms, some masked bloke who owns it will come up, thank you, and fuck off. On to the next realm. Even after the final one, there's no payoff to it. The boss fight they've been teasing the entire game turns out to not even be a boss, let alone a fight. It doesn't help that the last world has one less level than the others, meaning you're expecting an end level that just doesn't appear. It's a premature ejaculation of a finale from Snake Pass. Look, honey, I'm not saying I didn't enjoy myself. I was just expecting you to last a little bit longer. You know, you didn't really communicate that you were about to finish and then... Look, it's fine. I I'm sorry, it happens to a lot of video games. Forget I said anything, it's fine. Sorry. Sorry. Overall though, the gameplay is fantastic, and that's what really matters in a game like this. I'd recommend anyone to try it. Except Charlotte, I suppose. She's probably joined a support group for reptile survivors by now. But this isn't just a Snake Pass review. This is a Snake Par review. So on to Snake Party. Its developers describe it as the ultimate party game. And, well, it isn't. A couple of people have been asking me to stream, so I'm gonna stream, starting today. If you're watching this on the day it went out, then I'm probably streaming right now at twitch.tv forward slash your type of salad dressing. Once I've got the hang of Twitch a bit, I'll sort out a proper schedule, but for now your best bet is probably to follow me on Twitter, where you'll also get valuable life insights like this one. Thanks for watching, guys.